Where did my curiosity come from? I have no idea. I I I I grew up in a uh, I grew up in a uh, was my, my parents didn't have a lot of family around. We didn't have like it was usually just sort of us and maybe because I was I was bored. I got I had to make the world interesting. I, I had to, I had to look for things around me. We didn't we never traveled anywhere. Uh, first time I went on a plane I was 19. So maybe I'm just pulling this out of my rectum but I don't uh, I think maybe I just had uh, had to look more closely at the world around me to be to keep entertained I don't know and my parents were very old my dad was 65 when I was born um, obviously my mom was not 65 when I was born but uh, so you know we didn't we, we had sort of multi generations between us so I didn't have a lot of it's kind of I was maybe just sort of a, a, a loner a little bit and uh, maybe I just got weird. I don't know. Uh, for me, for, if I'm going to do a book on something, it's got to be, um, first of all, it's got to enable me to travel to some, not like exotic places or even overseas, but just travel somewhere uh, I've never been that I can't even imagine. Like, holy crap, somebody studies oral processing. There's a lab where they have a tongue camera, and they have uh, somebody who studies bolus rolling, and they've got, you know, I just, I, I imagine this world. It's often not quite as interesting as I imagine it, but it's still very fascinating. And so I, I, when I think of a topic, I'm, I, I am sort of surveying the territory and thinking, where would I go and what would this book consist of? And I know it when I see it. You know, and I, I and I also I'm cramming so much into my books that they're almost not even a topic. They're just a bunch of fun things I want to explore, and then I figure out what the umbrella topic is. So. I think it's not necessarily the best way to come up with a book idea, but that's what I do. This book grew out of a, a, a series of things. Packing for Mars, there was one chapter in there that had to do with the challenges of the NASA waste management engineers. Uh, so, and I was able to take that beyond just the typical, how do you go to the bathroom space, just to a level of complexity and fascination that I hadn't imagined. I had so much fun with that and people responded to that. Everybody seems to think the entire book is about how to go to the bathroom in space, but there's actually one chapter. Uh, so that there was that. I was, was immersed, so to speak, in that. And um, there was also the trip to Bino years ago. for a, I did, It was a 1,500 word piece about flatulence and I had gone to this lab that Bino has and I had so much fun material that I couldn't use because they just wanted kind of the uh, the bore sort of the service elements of it and I could and I was frustrated by that and I think that sort of wanted to find a home for many years uh, um, so what else it was, it was sort of a combination of things that and one day I thought oh yeah well what about yeah, what about the elementary canal? I used to sort of start, a, start sketching, brainstorming ideas of things that might be in there and where you might go and who you might talk to. And, and, and then you know that's going to be the book. Well, what is it about some people that they're just so open and happy and to discuss and talk about this where others just absolutely can't face it? That's a great question. I don't know why. I'm trying to think maybe it's how they're... I don't know that it's how they're brought up because we weren't a family where everybody was belching and farting. My father hated that. If you burped at the table, you got spanked. So, um, so I was, you know, I wanted to say that it's your upbringing, but I have absolutely no idea what makes people um, comfortable, uh, fascinated by it. And you know, there's other people who just want nothing to do with it. Don't find it interesting. Don't find it funny. Don't find it acceptable and uh, those people will probably not be readers <laughs> yeah I think uh, you know I you could probably say I'm I'm kind of a middle-aged woman with a soul of a 12 year old boy in a sense and I but I, I and uh, that sounds like I'm saying I'm, I'm immature which I guess you could say that I am but I, I think there's something to be said for holding on to the curiosity that and the l lack of embarrassment that you have as a 12 year old kid like uh, I, I'm I think that that's to be uh, a thing to be valued. I don't. I, I see other people will disagree with me, but I think it makes life more interesting. Also, just to have a to be able to 
look around you, look at the world, wonder how it works, ask questions, go further, uh, and not to have any barriers of like, oh, I shouldn't say this, or it's weird to ask this question. Um, I think you're cutting yourself off from all kinds of interesting things in life, so um, I'm all for being a um, middle-aged 12-year-old boy.